So we had a question this morning, uh, and this is a question that we get a lot. So we were going to cover it here. Um, you know, somebody asked, somebody says, well, what do you do if the tenant buyer moves out and your option period is about to expire? So we're talking about we have a lease uh, option to purchase uh, with the seller. OK, so if you followed it on the webinar, we told you that, you know, uh, we like to get more time from the seller than we're going to give our tenant buyer. So, for example, I may have a five-year term with the seller, okay? I may only that give... That means he has five years to, to get the deal done. exercise my option, right, to cash out, all right, or purchase the property. So, uh, what I'm going to do is, with my tenant buyer is I may give them 24 months. I may give them 36 months, but I'm not going to give them 60 months. You give them 12 months. Which is what we have, okay? So I'm going to give them something different. So the question, you know, then morphs into, yeah, but what if something still happens? Okay. All right. So, so let's pretend that it does. Let's pretend that we've had a couple of tenant buyers in and neither one of them have stayed the full term and we're, we're coming up on our five years, you know, maybe it's six months away. What, what do we, what do we do here? All right. So the good thing is we have options, right? The good thing is we have options. Um, we can go negotiate with the seller. Renegotiate with the seller. So we may he may say, hey, you know what? You've been making me payments or whatever. I like it. I don't care. I I tell you what, I'll give you another five years. How does that sound? You awesome. Keep sign right payments. here. Sign right here. You know, or he may say, you know what? I'll give you another five years, but man, I'd really like for you to give me like three grand. Well, I might be okay with that. If I've gotten $10,000 from two different tenant buyers, non-refundable, and they bailed on me, and so I've got 20 grand sitting there, hell yeah, I may be willing to give him three grand if he'll give me another five years, because guess what, if he does that, I'm gonna go get another tenant buyer, I'm gonna get another 10 grand. I mean, and then do it again, so we'll be up to 40 and have 3,000 of somebody else's money in it, so, plus the monthly money we made on and, it. And I got monthly money, right? So uh, let's say, though, that the seller is like, you know what? I waited my five years. I just, I, 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 I want you to cash me out. And if you can't cash me out, I can't give you any more time, all right? So if he says that, and I've still got six months left, I can actually go market that and sell it. I can find a buyer that wants to go right now that may be qualified to get a mortgage, and I can then just assign my option over to them. Now, this is if it's empty at that time. You know, and, and they can take it. So, Or if somebody's still in it, let's say we bought it for 100 and we've paid it down, you know, maybe we paid it down just a little bit. Maybe we paid it down to, what, 85 or 90? Maybe we could find a private money partner that had 85 or 90. They could buy it and we would just still be doing a lease option with them. So we keep it tied up. We just cash out the one seller and start paying the other seller. Or worst case scenario here is, right? We can't find anybody. We can't find any money partners. The worst case scenario is we tell the seller, we're just not we're just not going to exercise our option. Sorry man, thanks. It was fun. You can have the house back. And somebody says, "Yeah, but you've lost out." Yeah, I, I, I have lost anything. Cuz remember, I get a non-refundable option fee up front. Yeah. And I get money monthly cash flow. Yeah. And I didn't put any money into the deal. Yeah, I haven't right. put anything in. No. None of my own money. Mm -hmm. So I'm not out anything. As a matter of fact, I've made money in that five years. I'm okay with that. Now, I get it. You, you you have lost out on that monthly money coming in. You've lost out on the ability to put another tenant buyer in this house. But really, you just go get another house and do it again. More than likely, I had this happen. I had uh, two years with somebody. They wouldn't give me any more than two years. Uh, so I got it. Um, I had a, I bought it for 60 and I sold it for 80 and they gave me $8,000 to move in, non-refundable. I did not give my seller anything, uh, and I've been making two fifty dollars a month on it for the last two years, and I was supposed to buy it in June. 
I didn't have the money that I owed him in my pocket to go buy it and my tenant buyer wasn't ready yet. So I called, um, his name is Charles. I called him and I said, hey, I'm not ready, uh, but I, I think I can do it another year. Will you give me another year? And he said, sure. So we just extended the contract, excuse me, it went another year and now I've got until next June. My tenant buyer sent me a text message last week, seriously, like last week and she was like, hey, I, I'm talking to a mortgage broker. How much do I owe you on this thing so that we can go ahead and get this cashed out? Perfect. Perfect. She was supposed to cash me out in June. She couldn't, but she'll be ready in the fall. Yeah. Perfect. So now the post only focused on lease option, but we did talk about there's two other types of terms here. So let's talk about those. A subject to deal, this wouldn't really apply because in that case, we've agreed to take it over subject to the existing mortgage, right? So in that case, we're, there's no balloon or anything or cash out period on the end. We're paying that thing off until the mortgage expires, which would mean it would pay off or, you know, we can cash out at any time between that. So we're, we're not up against a balloon or anything like that on a subject to deal. In subject two, uh, we are getting their mortgage, the life of their mortgage, whatever is left in their mortgage. If they got 10 years, then we're getting 10 years. If they got 27 years left on it, we're getting 27 years, all right? Subject two is subject to this whole dang thing <laughs> coming to me. So the time on subject two is usually a lot longer before you actually need somebody to cash out. We were thinking like a short, and I, I made a mistake in the beginning. I took this one for two years. And now my two years come up and I had to renegotiate. He didn't even ask for any money to renegotiate the Charles that I was talking about. So I just renegotiated. I got another contract signed. No big deal. Got another year on it. So I get to make two fifty a month for the next year. And I'm still planning on these people cashing me out for the difference of what I've paid down versus what they've paid down. So I'm still looking at getting like 30 grand if she gets her mortgage. If not, I'll put it back up on the market and sell it probably just as a regular sale. And I do want to be clear here. You can do a subject to deal where you buy it for more than what they owe on it. And the existing <coughs> mortgage stays in place and everything. We just don't do that. Don't get okay? complicated. I, 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 we don't do that. So for us, subject to wouldn't apply there. We buy subject to when the house, it, when they owe what it's worth, or maybe it's even over leverage. That, that's when we would use a subject to. But we would still get 20 or 27 okay. years All right. on the thing. Now, let's talk about owner financing, right? Okay. I love owner financing. All right. So what would happen in an owner financing deal? Well, there, you know, it depends because in an owner financing deal, you know, you may agree to make monthly payments over the term until it's paid out, paid off completely which may, may mean that it's very much like a subject to deal, right? We don't have to worry about a balloon. Or you may do an owner financing deal where you actually have to pay them a certain po uh, percentage and then there is a balloon. So you, you have to think about all of these things when you are structuring the deal, okay? You have to think about all these things. And that's the type of scenarios and the detail that we get into in First deal done fast, right? Because you have to think about these things. We talked about in certain cases, such as owner financing and subject to, you actually take title to the property. Whereas with a lease option, we don't do that. And there's multiple advantages and disadvantages to the seller, to you, and to the buyer, depending on which of these three terms options that you take. So it's very important for you to understand all of those things, right? And so just because you understand what a lease option is and you go out, you know, a lot of people do this. A lot of people will say, oh my gosh, all right, so I got a lead and I understand now what a lease option is. So I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna talk to the seller. All right, what he said he would do a lease option. He'd give me five years, it's sweet. And then they get to the contracting standpoint and what we call structuring the deal, actually coming up with the structure and putting it to paper. And that's when a ton of people get lost because they don't know what to do. But we cover all that and we try to pre-prepare them in first deal done fast. Because I've been there and right. it's not fun. So we've covered that.
Right. Hey, we got to wrap this up. Right. I got a podcast in three minutes. Right. What other questions do we have? Do we have any live questions? We'll have to come back and finish up the rest of these questions some other time. I think the only thing we missed was three ways to make money, though. Real quick, there's three ways to make money in lease options, okay? You buy the house with no money down. You get the property for uh, whatever the payment is. You get um, no money down. You get it for whatever they owe on it, all right? And then you go find a tenant buyer, and since you didn't give any money down, and a tenant buyer gives you a non-refundable option fee to move in, if it's 5000 10000 or 40000 you get 5000 10000 or 40000 because you didn't put any down. Okay, that's the first way we get paid. Second way we get paid is say we agreed to pay $750 a month in a payment, and we can rent this thing out for $1,250 a month. That's going to be a $500 a month payment that we get every single month. That's the second way that we make money in lease options. The third way that we get paid is we bought it for what it's owed on it. Let's say we bought it for $100,000 and we sold it for $120,000. Well, there's $20,000 that we're going to get when they get a mortgage. Plus whatever we paid down. Plus whatever we got for paying down, um, you know, the 100 that we've been paying down. And there's a little bit of math to this. There's a schedule to this. Um, but basically, we make money three different ways. We make it on the non-refundable option fee that they pay us when they move into the house. We make it on the spread of the monthly payments. So we have a payment due, but there's a higher payment coming in. So we make money on that. And we make money when our tenant buyer goes and gets a mortgage for a back-end payday. Three ways to make money. And every time I've done this, it's way more money than if I just listed it and made the money up front. And besides that, cash flow, monthly income, that's the name of the game to financial freedom. So three ways to make money. If y'all have any questions, we've got to go. I've got a podcast interview at two. So we've got to go for now. If you have any questions, though, put them up in the group. We may come back later. We're going to do a webinar on Monday. First deal done fast closes next Wednesday. And we've got a slew of other things that you could be looking at to get involved to learn about lease options from us. Bye, y'all.